This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Europe embraces the Obamas. U.S. media is frenzied over Michelle's outfits. Did the public really pay attention to the G20 summit? And did anyone notice the other summit drama in the Middle East? Answers to these questions and more on Link TV's Mosaic Intelligence Report. I never thought that watching summits could be nauseating, but it was. Thanks to the U.S. and British media, which focused on the Obama Rama and frenzied over Michelle touching the Queen of England. Then there were the tedious analysis about the president <coughs> sneezing me. during a press conference, the Queen flirting with him, and the comparison between Michelle and Jackie Kennedy, amongst other juicy stories, giving the infamous tabloids of London enough material for several weeks. Meanwhile, President Barack Obama called the G20 summit in London a turning point in the effort to reverse the global economic meltdown and praise the nation's joint efforts as a historic step on the road to stability. I think we did okay, Obama said. The document that has been produced as well as the concrete actions that will follow reflect a range of our priorities. Overall, I'm pleased. Now, the Treasury Department can print more money and we can all forget about the global crisis. The demonstrators in London, labeled anarchists by several media pundits and kept at bay from where the world leaders were meeting, can all go home and eat cake. This was not the only summit that was full of drama. More agonizing than watching the G20 summit was keeping tabs on the Arab League summit in Doha. There were no queens to gossip about there. However, there was one drama queen, the Libyan leader Muammar al-Qaddafi. The brother leader, as he likes to be addressed, stormed out of the summit after denouncing the Saudi king and declaring himself the dean of Arab rulers. The Libyan leader disrupted the opening of the summit by taking a microphone and criticizing King Abdullah, calling him a British product and American ally. When the Qatari emir tried to quiet him, Gaddafi, the current African Union chairman, insisted he be allowed to speak, saying, I'm an international leader, the dean of the Arab rulers, the king of kings of Africa, and the imam of Muslims, and my international status does not allow me to descend to a lower level. In the future, uh, uh, the African Union will be similar to the United States of America. We will have the United States of Africa. We will have one African monetary fund, one African army. Later, Qatar's emir brought the colonel and the king together for a reconciliation meeting. They kissed and made up for the time being. Meanwhile, Hosni Mubarak of Egypt is a no-show two summits in a row without any official explanation. Jordan's King Abdullah reportedly went home early because he was upset that he was not met by the Emir of Qatar at the airport. And Sudan's al-Bashir, who defied an arrest warrant from the International Criminal Court in The Hague by flying to Qatar, received overwhelming support by the attendees. Next year's summit is scheduled to be held in Tripoli, Libya. That should be entertaining. I'm Jamal Dajani for the Mosaic Intelligence Report. To learn more about this program or to share your thoughts, visit us at linktv.org mir. You can also visit my blog on the Huffington Post. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world.